Hi Wildcats, it's time to make our signs, so let's get started. My goal is to keep this video under 10 minutes, so we've got to rock and roll. We're going to open the vCarve software. It looks like the blue sail. Let's open that. It's on the desktop. Once it opens, we want to create a new file. And this white area represents our board or our material. And we need to change the size. So we're going to change the size to 12. The X or the side to side is 12. The Y is 4. And the thickness is 0.5 or half an inch. And if I change this a little bit, let's just say I made it a 16, it automatically updates the size. But I don't want that. I want the 12. So I'm going to go back and change that. That's my board that I'm going to cut my sign out of. And you can choose millimeter or inches. Either is this, uh, your personal preference. This is not something that we need to concern ourselves with. So let's drop down here to the datum position or the starting position of the cutting tool. And we're going to select the center of the board. And you'll notice that in the middle of our board here, there's a red X. And that datum is in the center. And if we drop down here, we click on the corner, you'll notice that the datum or the starting point is now in the bottom left hand corner, but we want it in the middle. So that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to hit OK. We've got a bunch of different icons, buttons, and tabs to click on over here. There's a lot going on. And we're going to keep it very simple today. The first thing we want to do is we want to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to click on the rectangle and it asks us where we want the anchor point to be. Again, the anchor point is going to be in the center. Do we want our rectangle to have square corners, rounded corners, radi uh, inside radius corners, internal radius? We can choose either one of those. I'm going to choose external radius and I've just entered 0.125 or 1 8 of an inch. It adds a nice little professional radius to the outside of our corners. Let's let's do that. Let's add that. And then down here for our sizes, I'm going to enter 6.8 for my width and I'm going to add 2.4 for my height. And I'm going to hit create and you'll notice that it puts a rectangle right on our material. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to close this. Now you'll notice that the, the, the bullseye in the middle is not in the middle of our rectangle. Let's fix that. If we go over here to this bullseye, and that's the alignment tool, I'm going to select on it. And right up here at the top is the center button aligned side to side and top and bottom. So let's select that and see what happens. Hmm. It, oh, it's not selected. I'm going to click on my rectangle. Sorry about that. If I click on my rectangle, it's highlighted now. The lines have become dotted and it's turned the color pink. Now I'm going to select my alignment tool and let's see if it does anything. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Now it's in the center. You can tell the bullseye is in the middle. So that's kind of a neat lesson to learn. I'm going to come down here and close this window. I've got my rectangle. It's highlighted. And you can double click on it. And these windows come up. You can pull and drag on the corners and collapse them. You can grab the handle in the middle and move them around. I'm really liking what I've got right now. It's selected. I'm going to drop over here to the far bottom left icon. This little button allows me to create an offset. I'm going to click on the offset button and I want the offset to go out, not in. So I'm going to select outward and I'm going to select 0.2. Wonderful. I'll hit offset and it creates an automatic offset exactly the way we specified. And now our sign is starting to take shape. It's starting to look like a sign. And this is where it gets kind of fun because we can now 
add our text. Um, if I select the first T here, it's called draw text. I'm going to select that. And you can choose any font that you want. Let's type something in. I'm going to type Wildcats, all cap, obviously. Wildcats. And you can select different texts. Um, right? If I, you can kind of see how it looks here. Let's see what it might look like. Uh, I, I use the Arial quite a bit. Oh, it moved it for some reason. I'm going to undo that. Okay, it moved my text and turned it sideways. I don't know why it did that, and I don't like it. So I'm just going to hit Control-Z. And I'm going to type my... I'm going to go back to what I had before. I really kind of liked this. The letters are nice, big, and bold. You don't want a really fancy, cursive type writing. The cutting tool, it just makes this text too small. And sometimes those small texts have a tendency to not be very strong. So I like mine. You can even choose down here, choose bold if you want. And I'm going to type in Wildcats again. So I'm going to close this. And if I double select this, I can grab that handle in the middle. I can move it wherever I want. I can, like I said before, I can grab one of these corners. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. But what I don't want is I don't want it close to the edge. I had it really close to the edge. The cutting tool might not be able to get in between here. Or the cutting tool might not be able to get around it if it's almost touching the edge. I don't want that. What's going on here? It's got a weird thing going on here. I'm going to grab this pair of scissors and see if I can cut that weird thing off. I don't think I can. We'll just go with it. I'm going to back out. I'm going to roll my mouse and back out a little bit. And I'm going to collapse this window. Up here is a little tab, a button. And if I push that, it collapses the windows we were just in. And it opens this window over here. These are all... Um, the different commands that we can create for the cutting tool. We can tell it exactly the way we want this cut out. So I'm going to select our inside rectangle and then I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to select that Wildcats vector. Anything you draw, any line, circle, square, text is a vector. So I've got those two selected. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select Pocket Toolpath. So it's going to cut everything out but the Wildcats. It's going to make those letters pop up. So let's cl uh, click on that. And here it is. 1 8 inch end mill. That's correct. Our cut depth is going to be 0.1. That is also correct. That looks really great. And I'm going to slide down, and I'm going to hit Calculate. Oh, it's giving me, it doesn't like that little thing that we saw. And it's creating a problem here. Look at the A. I'm okay with it, I guess. So I'm going to close that window. And you'll notice that it opened in 3D. It opened the, it gave it a color, like a wood color. It's in 3D. If I hold down the left key and move my mouse, I can rotate it around, kind of see what it looks like from different angles. I don't want it in 3D. Look up here, it's in 3D. I'm going to go back to my 2D view. It's a little easier to work with. And now I'm going to select my outside rectangle. I've selected my outside rectangle. And this is what I want the machine to come down and I want it to cut all the way through the material so I can take my sign out of the board. So I'm going to select on profile toolpath. And 
right here, I'm going to uh, make it 0.53. Our material is 0.5, and I want it to cut through just a little bit deeper than our material is thick. So 0.53 will do that for us. And our tool is a eighth inch end mill. And that doesn't look right. 18 passes is way too much. <laughs> I'm going to make this... Um, I'm going to make it nine. I'm going to make it seven. Okay. And we want our vector to be cut on the outside. I want it to cut on the outside of my line, not on the inside. So outside is selected. This is an important part. We need to um, add tabs to our tool path. If the machine cuts all the way through and it goes all the way around, the machine will or the our little nameplate will be loose in the board. And if the cutting tool touches it, it might start bouncing and our sign might start bouncing around. So I'm gonna make the length 0.25, the thickness 0.25, and then I'm going to hit edit tabs. Okay, I've got two tabs. That should do the trick. Add the tabs. And you'll notice that they're populated here. You can see them now. You can actually click on them, click and drag. You can move them to different locations if you want. I'll keep them right there. That's a great spot for them. And I'll close. I'm going to drop down here to the bottom. And we'll hit Calculate. And it's just saying, hey, you're going to cut all the way through the board. Yep, we know. We planned that. And this is a neat feature. I'm going to hit Reset Preview. And let's see what happens when we preview all tool paths. There it is. There's our sign. And you can see those tabs in there. That will keep the sign from bouncing around when it gets cut out. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. If you slow it down too much, it lags. I'm going to watch it again and come on and see how it gives you a good idea of what's going to happen. And the cutting tool is coming in there. It's doing several passes. It's making it really nice. And if you slow it down too much, the rendering takes forever. So be kind of careful about that. It might freeze your machine up. I'm going to close this. I love it. It looks great. It's time to save it. So I'm going to come over here. And just as a caution, I'm going to hit File save as and I'm gonna put my name in here save yeah you can replace it and then over here I'm going to highlight both the tool paths that I created and I'm gonna to go to this button this is where the save really matters I'm gonna hit save now I've already put a USB drive into the computer. So, yep, Laguna Swift, that's our machine. Yep, looks good. Save toolpath. And I'm going to save this as my last name. But if I save it now, look, it's going to go to documents. I don't want it in documents. I want it on my USB drive. So I Peeled down to the bottom. Here's my USB drive. I'm going to select it and then I'm going to save it. Once you've done that, all your design work is done. Pull the USB and take it to the CNC. Secure your sign and we're ready to start cutting it out. Good job, Wildcats. Well done.